Hi, this is Emily from Minute Earth, in a special collaboration with Bill and Melinda Gates. Until a few decades ago, almost half the babies born more than six weeks premature died within a few hours or days due to a mysterious ailment now known as respiratory distress syndrome. In the United States alone, tens of thousands of babies died each year from what turned out to be a basic physics problem. That problem happens deep in the lungs, in tiny air sacs called alveoli, which exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen. In healthy babies, the alveoli are like perfectly inflated mini balloons. But in the lungs of preemies with RDS, doctors found that many of the mini balloons had either permanently collapsed or stretched way out, interrupting gas exchange and causing the babies to suffocate. This is where the physics comes in. If you've ever blown up a balloon before, you've probably noticed that the hardest part is getting it started. That's partly because of something called the law of Laplace, which basically says that the more curved a stretchy surface is, the harder it squeezes the fluid inside. You can see this law at work if you take two balloons and blow one up big and the other small, then connect them with a straw. The little one will squeeze so much harder that it'll actually push some of its air out and into the bigger one. Human lungs have essentially the same setup, but in healthy people, alveoli stay properly inflated because they're full of chemicals called pulmonary surfactants that make the small alveoli more stretchy and less squeezy, balancing the pressure between air sacs. Preemie's lungs haven't yet developed enough of these surfactants, so the small alveoli squeeze too much and collapse, while the large ones keep blowing up and get stretched out. Initially, doctors had no way to alter the stretchiness or squeeziness of their patients' air sacs. But they discovered that by pumping air continuously into the preemie's lungs, they could keep the pressure in their airways just high enough to prevent the tiniest air sacs from collapsing without overinflating the big ones, until the baby's lungs developed enough surfactant to work on their own. Someone invented a device called a CPAP that did just that. And in the United States, the survival rate of preemies with RDS soared from just one in four to three in four. And thanks to additional interventions, like helping preemies produce surfactant before they're even born, and supplementing their natural chemicals with artificial ones, we continue to inch closer to the day when no babies born in the United States die from RDS. What's more, organizations like the Rice 360 Institute for Global Health are introducing cheaper and easier to maintain versions of CPAP machines into clinics and hospitals in lower income countries, increasing preemie survival rates globally. In fact, since the invention of a CPAP, more than 2 million babies with RDS have been saved worldwide. Now that's a breath of fresh air. Read more about how life has improved and will continue to improve for the world's youngest and poorest in Bill and Melinda Gates' annual letter.